Nice jump shot. McKinney will kick with following the penetration. Bryant. So Kirby is four for seven. Ten points. And the 76er lead is one. Eric Snow hit the game winner on Wednesday night. I talked about that shot uh, with uh, Eric yesterday. I said, is that something you practice on a regular basis with a runner? He claims he does. Nice entry pass as Shaq is able to get down deep and is fouled by Matumbo. A big part of Philadelphia's defense is their ability to score so they can get their defense set up. But any time you have a block, now what you get is a fast break. It's Kobe coming down the floor, pulling up and hitting the jump shot. And then another next time down the floor, a stop once again. Look how deep the post position. You cannot stop Shaq when he gets it that deep. So right now the Lakers combo that one-two punch really starting to get back in sync after that layoff. Shaq at the line, out of sync, 0 for 3 at the foul. And Matumbo, collecting a second foul, is replaced by Matt Geiger, who played 14 minutes in game one, 5 for 7 from the field, 10 points. He did foul out. Matt Geiger, who has certainly heard the criticism concerning a series of injuries during the course of the season. Shaquille hears it from the crowd as hits a free throw. Tigers minutes have been limited coming back from a tear of the right quadricep. But a major contributor the other night. Crowd wanted a double dribble called on Iverson. That shot deflected short and a loose ball foul against the 76ers. It's on Tyrone Hill. The Sixers are over the foul limit. Well, as the Sixers have gone to their bench, Matt Geiger is in. Now, the other night, we know that he really struggled trying to play against Shaq. Shaq had 18 points in the third quarter, a lot of them when Matumbo went out with fouls. Hard the other night in the game, Matumbo, when he was in the game, they were a plus 14. When he was out, they were a minus 8. When he sits down, their defense really gets hurt. So what does Matt Geiger have to do? He's got to make some of those jump shots to at least try to counteract Shaq somewhat who's going to try to post him up every time he gets a chance. Well, Shaquille is now one for five at the line. Todd McCullough now checks in for Tyrone Hill. You can log on to NBCSports.com as Steve Jones looks at the keys to how the Sixers can beat the Lakers again. Plus, Matt Gukas with an in-depth preview of every game of the finals, including his X factor for each contest, all at NBCSports.com. So Shaquille O'Neal, one for six for the field. And he has got three of his last 14 at the line. I should say one for six at the line. Boy, Allen Iverson, that's about the fourth time now he looks like he's got hit in the face. Oh, McCullough rejected, stripped by Shaq. Third block shot for Shaquille O'Neal. The lineup. Sitting on the bench, Matumbo. That's exactly what happened the other night. The Kimbe knows he has to stay out of foul trouble. You know where the Lakers are heading now at the end of this period. Lakers up 1917 as we come up on two minutes to go. And the first. Iverson for three. Bryant using the pick. Bryant to the rim. Rebounded by McCullough. Snow pushing it. Leads McKee. Iverson from downtown. You know, it, it looks like the Lakers are winning this game. It looks like they're dominating inside. When you look up the scoreboard, the Sixers are up one. They're really an amazing team, Marv. They just keep hanging in there and competing against you. It's not always pretty, but it is effective. They do not go away as the Milwaukee Bucks can attest to. We used the example the other night. Grant is hammered by McCullough. 
perhaps more impressive than any 76er victory was game six when they came from 33 down, hung in, and cut the deficit to 10, although they lost the game. Well, and it was this guy in that fourth period, Allen Iverson, who had 26 points. He said that was one of the reasons why they were able to win game seven. He got into a rhythm, ended up getting 44 in that game, had 70 in a five-quarter period of time. So we know he's capable of striking and striking quickly. Marv, you'll go through stretches where he might not score for nine minutes, and then might score 20 points in a quarter because he's going to be relentless, fearless, and he's going to keep coming at you. One of the 76er heroes from game one, Roger Bell, has checked in for the first time. He had the most memorable bucket. There's uh, Shaq getting a rest. The most memorable field goal uh, in that overtime. Well, they were dead in the water, down five. Shot clock winding down. No way to score, and he weaves in there with that left hand. Look out. Derek Fisher lands in the first row. <laughs> and uh, here's an up close and personal from the crowd. But, Marv, just to finish that up, Roger Bell hits that big shot, makes it three, and then Iverson goes on his seven-point run. But Derek Fisher, emotionally in this game, he really struggled in game one, never got into a rhythm after being spectacular against the Spurs. They really need him. He's that third guy they need on the floor to be the scorer. Iverson to the crossover and lost his footing. Deflected out. Last touch by Robert Orr. Phil Jackson has a front line of Grant, Ori, and Bryant at the small forward. Where everywhere Allen Iverson goes, he draws two or three guys. Referees rule the ball was tipped. Sixers re uh, regain possession. Here's Bell. The box out by Ori. Coming up on one minute remaining. In the first, Lakers in possession. They lead by one. Grant setting the screen. Nice uh, screen and roll. Beautifully between Horace Grant and Kobe Bryant. See, Todd McCullough does not have the foot speed to be able to show and get back on that play. And that's what I thought they would do more of tonight. Screen roll, try to stretch that sixer defense. Geiger. Yes. Matt Geiger. Five of seven in game one. Hits on his first field goal attempt. And the Lakers are up 23-22. Bryant being played by Bell. Kobe on fire. 12 points in this first quarter for Kobe Bryant. Well, Kobe normally does his game day interviews with us, Mark. Tonight he declined. He had that game face on early, and he is coming out and has been brilliant here to start this game tonight. Foul on, on Shaw. Lakers had a foul to give. This is the screen. Now watch McCullough. He's going to come out here, and here comes Kobe. And on the roll, you've got to have somebody step in. Look where Matt Geiger is. He's got to be the guy to get there. He is slow getting there because he's concerned about Robert Ory shooting the basketball. And next time, Kobe comes down, and he's in that rhythm now. He's getting distance with that little jab step, pulls up and shoots that jump shot. So as expected, Jim Gray talked about it to start the game. They're going to go to Kobe early, and he's delivered. Rodney Buford, who did not play at all in game one, has checked in as the Sixers hold for a final shot on this opening quarter. Three-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. One on the 24. McKee, yes! Aaron McKee with three and four-tenths seconds to go in the quarter. Now Shaw battles to get it on court. After one of game two of this NBA final series, it's the Lakers 25 and the Sixers 24. Kobe Bryant five for nine for the field. He has 12 points. Shaquille with five. Only one of six at the line. He does have three block shots and Allen Iverson just three for nine.